Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle, just in case you didn't know, now you do know. And today, we're talking about what I would do if I was starting my brand completely fresh right now. What would I change? Would I keep anything the same? All right, so my biggest question I think I have for myself is would I keep the name I currently have, Rebellious Clove, or would I switch it out to be just my name, Danielle McAllister? Would I go for something else? How would I name my brand? And this is actually something I'm not sure about because I don't find my name to be very exciting or hold much brand recognition or um, be easy to remember. So I'm not really sure that and McAllister, I'm not really all that attached to my family name. Um, so I'm not sure that I want it attached to my brand. What I know I would 100,000% change is that I would be more decisive about what I make. I have wishy-washied all over the place. I think that really hurt my business um, in the long run. I think I would go with making plus size clothes immediately, like right now. I mean, I'm already doing that, but like, or I'm working on it, but I wouldn't start with accessories, then move into clothes. I would just go right for clothes. People still don't understand the merit of having accessories, like necklaces and bags especially that are made to fit larger bodies and they just don't see the value in that and so I know people see the value in plus size clothes and then I would add in accessories to use up scraps but I wouldn't make it my sole focus. I want to say a huge thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. If you're not familiar, Anna, Anna Luisa is a sustainable jewelry brand who makes fun but simple and unique pieces. They start at $39, which is very reasonable in my opinion, and they are both carbon and water neutral. I was allowed to pick a few pieces from the website and I thought I'd explain why I chose them. So first off, I got this cute little ring. Honestly, I don't have anything like this in my ring collection and I just wanted something simple but very fun to wear. I also got these little, they look like this. Very easy to wear. They kind of make me feel like a grown up. I also got this very cute little safety pin necklace. Uh, I don't want to take it off. It's just so cute. I really like it. Uh, I did need an extender for this necklace. So if you're buying any of the necklaces and you have a chunky neck like mine, get an extender. They sell them on the website as well. Um, you can use them for the bracelets or the necklaces. Also, I should mention this ring is a size 10. Even some of their rings go up to a size 11, I've noticed, which I think is great because not all ring sizes, like not all fingers are thin and not chubby like mine. So these are the other earrings that I got and I got them because they're just so cute and squiggly. I don't even know if you can see them. Anna Luisa has been very kind and offered a 20% off discount. If you click the link in my description, it will give you 20% off the entire website. You know, get shopping if you want. For sure, my social media content would be focused on video, short form video. Um, leveraging like TikTok and Reels because that is how you gain a following these days is through short form content. It's way easier to go viral or it seems easier. I've not managed to do it. Um, but I feel like that would be the best option when you're building a brand is to go viral or to get content going on TikTok and Reels. TikTok specifically, yes, doing like Reels at the same time or waiting a couple weeks and then posting the same thing you posted on TikTok on Reels. Um, it usually takes two weeks to a month for the trend that you're following on TikTok to pick up on Instagram. My YouTube, 
I did not have a brand when I started my YouTube however long ago. That is my dog drinking water. Yes, it is. Um, dogs, they'll do whatever they want. Um, I started making sewing tutorials and if I was starting fresh now, I likely wouldn't have a YouTube channel. Um, and I'd be starting over from scratch and I would still want to make YouTube content because I like connecting with you guys like that. But I would not be making any, like, fashion content. I wouldn't be making, like, any content about other brands. I would be making content solely focused around my brand. I would be only doing, like, vlogs and maybe like styling videos and things like that but I certainly would not be doing like the rating plus size brands um or rating stores that sell plus size I would not be doing any try on hauls I would not be doing any sewing tutorials which is what I started with and people still watch those videos today and leave questions instead of watching any of the newer content and realizing I'm not making those things anymore and I'm not offering solutions to their questions. Um, I, that's not my focus anymore. And people are still asking like, how much fabric do I have to get? Um, can I do this? Can I do that? And I feel bad because I'm not going back and answering those questions. Um, because that's just not where I'm at right now. I think that I made a mistake actually by making that content to start off with. It was really intense. Like it's very hard to design, like cut, sew, and make a garment in a week. And then to film it and have to edit it and post it all also in that week when you are at the same time working full time or even working part time and doing other things nearly impossible and you burn out very quickly and I don't like sewing enough to want to teach people how to do it all the time so I would not make any sewing tutorials I would just show me sewing um as if it's a part of my business which it is in fact I would make all content I make focused around my brand I probably wouldn't even have a separate personal Instagram my personal Instagram is bigger than my business Instagram. Sometimes I wonder if that was a mistake and if I shouldn't have been focusing only on my business and then just by happenstance people follow me on the other account. Um, I would honestly prefer people follow my business than me. I barely post anything on my business or on my personal account. I I can't remember the last time I posted an outfit photo, um, it's been months, but I do share like more personal things there. Oh, and my dog has come to get her head scratched, uh, but she's still wet from being outside, so it's just more like a, a forehead rub. Yeah, all content will be focused around the business and I would not focus on growing my personal Instagram account or my personal brand, it would all be focused around the brand itself. For a long time with my business, I went to markets pretty regularly. In fact, I started out when I moved home from school over 10 years ago now, um, going to markets a couple times a summer and doing holiday markets, things like that. I don't really like them. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy having to be on so much all the time, all day. And I would probably never do them. And I would do maybe a pop-up style where I'm not the one running it. Um, I don't have to be there to sell my products. I don't even have to like, all I have to do is like send off the goods and they get sent back to me, that's it. Whatever doesn't sell comes back. And I don't have to do the selling part. I just have to tell people it's happening and promote it. But I don't have to be there and I don't have to be participating actively in the sales of the product. I am much better 
I'm much cooler on the internet. That's that's it. I'm just much cooler on the internet and I'm not even that cool on the internet as it is. So also if I was making an online store today, I would make it in US dollars. Seems pretty random to choose that, but as a Canadian, um, it doesn't confuse me when websites are in US dollars. Hi buddy, you can't hang out right now. First off, you're wet. Second, I'm busy. Thank you. Doesn't confuse me when other websites are in US dollars, but it sure confuses other people when my website is in Canadian dollars because I'm Canadian. Now I have found a solution for that. Uh, now when you go to my website and it senses your location, whatever magic voodoo they do, um, it asks if you want to change it to US dollars or Canadian dollars or I think I even ha have Great British pounds and the Australian dollar and maybe even the euro. So it should ask you if you want to change your currency because people who shop in US dollars and look at the Canadian dollar price are like, oh my god, that's so expensive. It's not expensive, it's actually very reasonable. Um, we're just an ethical business that pay ethical wages, so it looks expensive when you're used to buying fast fashion and paying $5 for something. But I would put my website in US dollars. It seems to not even phase anybody um, when something's in US dollars, even though it's a Canadian brand, and I just feel like that would smooth some stuff out. Um, but I've found a solution for that now. I would also sell very minimal one-of-a-kind products. There will be times where I only have enough fabric to make one of things, one of something, and like, yeah, I do that now with the skirts because I only have enough fabric for one, but I, m the skirt is the product, right? Um, I would, in the past, make bags that they were only available that one style, like, couldn't get any more. Also, people are very wary of one of a kind and it takes forever to sell. I think that hurts the business when um, they just see one of a kind items. Especially with sized things like clothes, um, I think that if I ever make like a one or two of a kind, it won't be pre-made, or it might be, but we'll see. I think I just would like to stay away from as much one of a kind stuff as I possibly can, unless I'm selling off samples or something, you know? I think this goes along with mm, probably working harder on my business Instagram account and focusing more on that instead of my personal Instagram account. I think I would network more with other plus size brands and also um, plus size influencers and send out gifted products, stuff like that. I have done gifted product in the past to a couple of people and I have sent other things out with like no expectation of someone posting about it, but if they do, they do, and if they don't, they don't. But I think I would try and do more exchanges with influencers for gifted product um and i'd like to work with them more and work with other brands that are sort of in the sphere of what i'm doing and inclusivity and stuff like that all right so that's all i have for you today thank you so much for hanging out with me and uh watching this far into the video very much appreciate that if you have any comments leave them down below don't forget to like this video if you liked it share it with your friends and uh subscribe if you aren't already and you want to see more from me uh thanks again to Anna Louisa for sponsoring this video I appreciate it um all right I'll see you guys soon bye